You're at least divorced. How come you drink so much? Oh. You know what I think? I think if Joe got himself a job and the divorce and asked you to go to the registry office with him, you'd run like hell. I happen to be in love with him. Hmm. As long as he isn't free to tie you down. Are you through? Oh, I'm with you. Give me the excitement of an affair every time. Ben, will you help us? Mm, I keep thinking, if Joe goes home, maybe you'll have time for me. You've got a wife and two children. And so's Joe. And I've got terrible problems. <laughs> All right. I'll see what I can do. I'm most impressed. Definitely most impressed. You really are sort of chap, Lampton. You, uh, haven't included a recommendation from Brown within your portfolio. My reason for leaving Brown was purely personal. I didn't abscond with any funds, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny fellow, Lampton. I'm glad you've got a sense of humour. The more I see of you, the more I'm convinced that you're our sort of chap. <coughs> Turnbull? I want you to meet Turnbull. He's in charge of your department. This is Lampton. He's joining us. Ah, how do you do? Very pleased to have you with us. I'll show you your desk. This way. <laughs> Good job. Could have led to something important. Like what? A pension, maybe? You can't expect me to start at the bottom again at my age. Why not? This time you might rise by your own ability. What if I haven't got any? Joe, the Hampstead flat is free now. I'm moving into it tonight. You're moving into it. Yes, I think it's better that we don't see each other for a while. Just until you get your bearings. I've got my bearings, darling. You asked me to leave Wally. Well, here I am. But you never left Wally. Not really. You want to use me as a stick to beat your wife with. You won't take a job unless it's on a board because you're afraid that Brown will laugh at you. Don't you see? All I care is that you should get a job before you've drifted too far. Everybody's always wanted me to do something. Prove something. My mother wanted me to be a better man than my father. My school teacher wanted me to win a scholarship. In the RAF, they wanted me to die happily. Brown wanted me to be his yes man, and now you want me to prove if I've got any real ability. All right, then. Find your own job, then join me in Hampstead. Oh, let's face it, Nora. I'm a summer romance. The chap you liked on board ship and find embarrassing now that you're in port. You're ashamed of me. That's a bloody lie. If only I was what you and your friends are forever describing as an interesting man, I'd be home and drive, but I'm playing Yorkshire and you've no time for that. What I've no time for is self-pity. Oh, and while I'm at it, let me tell you that I don't think you and your sophisticated friends are any better than the poor subs in Worley. In fact, I think they're worse because they pretend to know better. Full of love and Oxfam they are, full of humanity. But introduce a stranger, a non-club member like me, into their midst, and they'll insult him just for the hell of it. If you're trying to tell me that you're going back to Worley and want me to take the blame... I didn't say I was going back. But I will say this much for Susan. She never patronized me. Oh, you loathed her. I was never a project to her, an underdeveloped person. So you're going back to Orly. You'd rather be a big fish in a small pond. Than a what? A zero in London? Than be self-respecting and independent. good at my job. I know I am. But so are 5,000 or 50,000 other men. I could never live with you, Nora, because you'd always made me feel that. You're talented. You'll go far. 
make it sound like a curse. the magic bean giveaway man. You must have seen me on the telly. Now then, if you have one tin of magic beans or one package of magic made soup, then these fibers are for you. Oh, yes. It may not be much, mate, but it's better than being a layabout. Wait. Cop your free sample. Well, let me tell you this. Far from lifting me anywhere, Abe Z. Brown is now holding me back. But just because I'm married to you doesn't mean I've got to spend the rest of my days in loyal and cringing servitude. There's a bigger fish in the sea than A.Z. Brown and company. But if I'm going to sit on that board, it's going to be because he needs me, and by God, he does. Look, Joe, that's where the money is. Lots of lovely houses up there, you know, Joe. I'll have one of those. I'm going to have a lot. <laughs> no, you're not. You'll be far better off with your empty little wife. These people at the top, they are the same as anybody else. But you had it inside of you to be so much bigger than any of them. Good. Splendid. I'm glad things have worked out so frightfully well for you and Susan. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Cock-a-doodle-doo. You brainless little lapdog. I never had any intention of putting you on the board. We've already got somebody to serve the tea. Don't kill that bastard. Go on, say it wasn't cricket. I leave that kind of remark to love a boy. He's in the hospital. Good. I hope it's fatal. <laughs> London, promise. All right. Susan, I'm extremely worried about Harry. If he finds out why I've left you, he might do something impetuous to attract parental attention. <laughs> 